Welcome back to the Morning Brief. It's now to shift gears to so the softer side of things. And we have the soft guy. Literally. I mean literally. In every sense. Uh, yeah, perhaps he's uh, arguably one of Africa's most recognizable faces. Uh, with the Big Brother Niger uh, job he does as the host as well as hosting other programs. Like Ebuka Obich Uchendu is literally in, in your face from one show on television to another show besides Big Brother. That's why you have to answer all the questions on what is up to uh, next as, as, as a TV host, as an events anchor. Ebuka Obich, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thanks for having you see, me. You I'm almost confused trying to say what I want to say, because there's a lot to say, so I'm trying to map my thoughts. How do I say this so that it captures the, the entire person called Ebuka Obich? But people don't know that you're a very calm guy. Uh, you you tension us with your <laughs> with your fashion sense, but people That's don't know not how. It's <laughs> not the intention to tension. It's <laughs> not the intention to tension. Right? Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, man. How have you been? It's, man? it's really good to be here. Um, I've been great. Uh, you said soft guy. I don't know if anybody's soft in Nigeria right now. <laughs> <laughs> the way things are going, but we are, we're we're doing we're doing what we need to do. It's been a uh, an interesting journey for me um, all the way up until this point. So um, I'm a part of this family. This is the first time I feel like I'm being interviewed here. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate being interviewed. I was yeah, planned I for you, but I couldn't say no we to have you. For you. <laughs> I can still leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too late, but thanks for having me. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, uh, since you're here for the first time on this particular show, so we know that you started on Big Brother uh, Niger. Yeah. You guys were the pioneer. Uh, of that set and now you've seen this uh literally the face of that program besides the housemates and i'm wondering for people who are thinking to themselves to so say okay um ebook has come a long way and i've seen you say some things about how to be a bit patient with life and walk through it at your own pace as much as possible so let's get straight to that part of it how you were able to metamorphose from being a housemate to now one of the most recognizable faces and now you're doing other things besides hosting yeah i mean i think i've told this story quite a bit it's i went on the show at the time it was 2006. Mm. i know i'm aging myself now. <laughs> that's about seven it's, 18 years ago, 18 years ago. Um, at, at the time I went in just to win the money my whole plan was go win this show go do my masters abroad and you know I went in I didn't win and I always say being famous and broke is a terrible thing right <laughs> so I had to find my way around things and at the time I had done some things in the house who said oh you sound really great you look good why not try out a few auditions and see if you can get on TV and that's how the dream started um, I started with hosting a game show back in 2006 um, but as soon as I got into hosting TV, I immediately realized it was something I loved doing. And I knew that it had to be a long game because at the time TV here was still not as grand. I mean, it's still not where it's supposed to be, but we had like barely a few channels at the time. And I figured that, you know, to make my way to the top, I needed to earn my space and learn on the job as I, as I went along. And it was very, very important to me. But I also had very diverse interests, you know, because I went on a reality show, everybody wanted to box me into this mm. red carpet host or this guy who jumped on stage. Um, but I'm a fan of very diverse topics from politics to whatever it is. And whatever opportunities I had, I tried to hold on to. So when the opportunity for Robin Minds came on, um, I think it was in 2013. At that time, I had gone back to school, done my master still, by the grace of God, with small money that I gathered. <laughs> and uh, Robin Mines was sort of the sort of rebirth for me, um, um, which is still on channels now. It's been 11 years since I've been hosting that show. Yeah. And um, I, I was very conscious of the fact that it's one thing to be a great TV host, as you all know, it's another thing to be able to host live television. And that was where I sort of honed my skills, I believe, um, mm. the most. Which was why when the opportunity to host Big Brother came, it was a no-brainer for the organizers to say, okay, we need someone who understands that live television is a different ball game, but most importantly, also has the understanding of this format. And the dream sort of <laughs> took flight from there. Um, I've never been one to rush anything. Um, I've always believed in the long game. I've always believed that um, success comes with, you know, understanding that you need to be good at this thing, but you also need to understand that you never stop learning, uh, whatever it is you do. So that's that's been 
that's helped me. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <So far. laughs> Beautiful. Just like your cap. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you. that's one thing we're going to take from you before you go. <laughs> uh, no problem. <laughs> we can talk about it over here. Well, before we begin to talk about Ebuka Turns Up Africa, let's look at some of the tough issues still. You know, whenever you celebrities speak, the yeah. entertainment world catches cold. <laughs> so um, um, some of your tweets uh, took flight recently where you said 2012 was your most difficult year. You know, and uh, you talked about how it affected your mental health. Uh, what was different about 2012 and 2024? You know, <laughs> things are really, really, really tough now, yes. you know, with looting and everything and rising cost of commodities. Is it that, oh, you've made your millions and things are different uh, from between 2024 and 2012? I mean, it goes more on a personal level. So like I said, I, I started working on TV in 2006. I hosted a few shows between 06 and 2010. Um, and then I went to the United States to get a master's degree. Um, I had this bright idea to get this intellectual property law degree. I'll come back and set up this entertainment law firm and be the greatest entertainment lawyer in Nigeria at the time. And then I came back and I had spent all my money in school and I didn't have a job. Um, so 2012 was hard because it was at a time when people had sort of, to use the word loosely, forgotten me, right? Because I was off the scene for two years and Nigerians, they don't waste time to say, ah, who the hot now? <laughs> they moved on to the next best hosts uh, around yeah. because I had been off the scene for a while. I didn't have the money to set up the entertainment law firm anymore. People didn't even believe in entertainment law that much at the time. Because why do I need a lawyer? It's not just to read contracts and sign it myself which is why we saw all of this artist drama with the managements that were going on at the time. So nothing I planned sort of worked out eventually. So I spent about a year and a half unemployed, um, basically, and a good chunk of it was in 2012. So I just remember that year being extremely confusing, depressing, and I had already started considering, you know, maybe I'll just carry this my degree and quietly go and look for a nine to five somewhere this dream might not necessarily work out. So it was a very tough mental year for me to make that decision to say, okay, is this what I really want to do? Um, is it even worth it at the end of the day to you know, hold on to this dream of being this TV guy that runs this entertainment law firm and until Robin Mines came along. <laughs> so Robin Mines is very special to me in so many ways because it was the first job I got after coming back from my master's for almost two years. Um, besides the fact that it helped me uh, get back on my feet, it also trained me much better than I expected. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, to, comparing it to 2024, of course, they are on different levels because this one is all of us that <laughs> everybody is going through it at this point. It doesn't mean I'm not having a tough time like everybody else, but... Um, I think I'm in a phase of my career where, and on age-wise as well, where I've planned better, I've understood that you don't just get up and assume that the world is going to wait for you uh, at your time. So you have to plan for the future better. So that's probably helped me more now. I had to quickly check your age. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a young man. You're a young man. <laughs> Gen Early 40s. Not Gen Z. Yes, people think, people, I don't know what people think, right? I think people who know me, or who have followed my career for a while understand that I'm, that I'm not Gen Z or a young millennial. Uh, but at the same time, there are people who are sometimes surprised that I'm 40. I'm going to be 42 this year. Interesting. So I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> You're aging quite well. And it, it takes me to the point around uh, the context where you operate. Yeah. By the way, you've had the chance to use your, uh, your legal degree in a show. So you don't have to do my lord elsewhere. <laughs> you use it somewhere else. Yeah. But the context in which we operate as a celebrity uh, on different fronts now, um, you come under a lot of attack, accolades for your fashion, and all of that. I mean, next to politicians in Nigeria, maybe celebrities are next when it comes to all of that attention. And there's been this classic debate. We just ended a political uh, an election cycle, and a lot of people declared support for candidates. Some other people didn't. They found other ways to do it. They donated, but stayed neutral. For some other people, they went all out. They're like, well, you know what? You die only once anyway. So <laughs> if I die, I die in, in that sense. But afterwards, we've seen uh, particularly celebrities come under attack for either performing at events, uh, comparing at events. For example, I recall, I think it was Kate Henshaw uh, recently, was yes. an event uh, in Emo State, uh, and people thought, 
no way you're <laughs> labor power at least you've shown support you seem to have shown support for labor party and here you are doing stuff for apc so how do you handle that you have to feed right you have to do your job very true but also there's a political leaning a lot of people think uh, those in government are corrupt particularly the ruling party so how has it been for you how have you been able to handle that dynamic i think it's uh, it's a it's a very heavy burden and i think it's sometimes unfair to believe that you know uh, um uh, celebrities are not supposed to feed, right? A lot of people earn their living doing these things. You have event planners who might vote a certain way but have the right to plan events for anybody and nobody holds them accountable for it. It's true. Um, but at the same time, I think when you decide to put yourself out there, right, you have to understand that it comes with this heavy consequences uh, as well. And whatever line you decide to toe, you have to be ready. Um, for whatever comes with it. And I think that's very key. With me, for example, I mean, I've, I'm a huge lover of politics and I've never been, I've never shied away from that. Um, but at the same time, I understand that people are listening, people are watching. I, I work on TV and because of my media leaning, I'm not one to come out and say, this is what I'm going to vote for because I'm still going to have to host a show and hopefully get to interview whoever I need to interview. But for those who decide to do things like that, um, for like a Kate Henshaw, for example, she made her statement saying, I got booked for a show. It doesn't mean I support the person. Um, and I think that's fair enough. But people are going to always <laughs> have their saying something like that. And I think it's now, while I, I don't think it's fair yeah. to judge celebrities harshly, I think the celebrities should also understand that there's a reason why that would happen. And it's now on you to either decide to take those gigs or decide to work for whoever it is you want to work for and hopefully get and have a good explanation <laughs> to, to <laughs> explain it away. <laughs> well, but the truth me. is we also live in a country where the opportunities are few and far between, right? You can, if you lived in, a, in the United States, for example, you can decide to earn a living away from politics and be fine. But here, how many events are there? It's even getting thinner by the mm. day. Right. So if you're going to get booked for something, if you strongly do not believe that it's something you want to do, then don't do it. But if you want to do it for the money, do it with your full chest <laughs> and bear the consequences, <laughs> I believe. So, okay, just land on your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't host certain gigs for certain people, okay. for sure. For certain politicians. For certain politicians, yeah. I mean, and it's not necessarily about the parties they belong to, maybe because of the ideals that they have you know, shown in the past or whatever. Um, but at the same time, I don't hold that against anybody. And I also am able to draw a distinct line between working for somebody and doing something for the government or doing something for the country, right? I mean, I've hosted debates in the past. I've hosted things in the, in the presidential villa. I felt like I was doing that for the government. I wasn't doing that for the person in the office. So if you can draw that distinct line for yourself, I think, all right. Uh, my producer is telling me that we have just a short time to talk. So let, let's talk about your, your show. Yes. Uh, Ibuka Towns of Africa. Yes. Uh, some people were surprised. Okay, Ibuka is now inside again. You know, he was inside before, for those who understand. He now went out and he's hosting. Now he's back inside. Um, the objective of the show, what do you want to achieve with Ibuka Towns of Africa? And of course, uh, the next question will be, uh, I've watched two seasons of the show. Is this... Are, are these the guys? Is this real <laughs> them, or is it just a persona? Because I can see Timmy is very cheeky. Um, Jimmy is quite sensitive, and all the elements yeah. for those who have watched the show. So, what is this all really all about? Thank you for watching. I don't think people are watching. <laughs> I'm calling you. No, I, you, I, my lord, I object. How did they say that? <laughs> Objection, my lord. I confess, I've not watched. <laughs> so basically, it's, it's, a, um, it's it's a it's a travel show. That's that was basically the baseline for it. I've always been very passionate about the continent, right? And you know we say a lot, so we need to show the world what Africa really looks like. We know what we see when we travel the continent, but we know what the world says about the continent. And I just wanted an opportunity to showcase this continent, um, especially away from the giants, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana. The world seems to know these countries, you know. Let's showcase the continent was my first thought. But I also find that sometimes travel shows can be very boring. You go, oh, welcome to, mm. oh, this is, nobody really cares about <laughs> shows like that. So I decided to make it a boy strip to say, okay, let me go to travel the continent with my friends and infuse some reality dynamics into it where people are entertained 
while also exploring the continent. Mm, so those were that was the first basis for it, you know, showcasing the continent. And the second part of things, you know, it's probably the first reality show you see almost anywhere in the world where there's no female on it. And it's not an indict indictment on, on the women. It's more because reality shows are heavily <laughs> driven by women. We're angry. It's almost impossible to have a successful reality show without a woman on it. Yeah. And I tried, wanted to say, Let's challenge that a bit and see whether it's like can be interesting, <laughs> okay. right? Enough for people to watch. So that's happening. And thirdly, men are seen as very hard. You know, we don't have emotions. We're not vulnerable. You've seen the show. There were very interesting conversations had about guys being vulnerable, you know, and talking about real issues. And I think that was important uh, to showcase as well. And then a lot of people think that when you hear boys strip, it's like boys are just going to drink and cheat on their wives. <laughs> And I'm like, we, we actually just hang out and only what you show us that we see. But that's what we do. Hey. I don't know what you do. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. For one, I'm going to watch the show so that I can learn more about the you know, uh, disposition. How men think generally. I think yes. women need to understand it a bit more so that they can deal with their men. Thank you more. for accepting that. <laughs> we need to you understand us too, then. Jeffrey. Very quickly, speak to funding. You know, Nigeria, the economy is not smiling, not just in Nigeria, globally. How are you drawing up funding? you know, for travel around Africa and then the objective of uh, promoting Africa, uh, how much will be coming to Nigeria in terms of tourism uh, promotion? I mean, it's sadly, the people don't believe in a lot of these sort of things, right? When you tell them, oh, let's showcase, you know, tourism, sadly, especially in a place like this, is still seen as very fringe and it takes a lot for people to believe in it. Um, funding for the show came from Amazon Prime because um, I had pitched this to a couple of people for a number of years, actually. This hasn't just come out today. It's been about six years, wow. mm -hmm. you know, trying to get this going. And they finally believed in it. So a huge part of the funding came from it. We shot heavily in Lagos, uh, in Kigali and Marrakesh, uh, as well as Lake Kivu and Casablanca. But, um, I mean, the jobs created, first of all, from this, it was a heavily Nigerian crew, even if it was an American uh, prime funded, but it was a heavily Nigerian crew, you know, and for me, these things are very important to, be, to do well. Right, so that when it's done and people see that this can be done in such a good way, I mean, you've seen the show, it's on a level that you almost forget you're watching the continent. Mm. That's how the production quality is, and that was very, very important for me to see that, okay, if you commit money to something and you can see the feedback. I mean, I've gotten calls from certain countries already, interestingly, mm. saying, oh, we'd like it to oh, come yeah. just because of what they've seen that we did. And this had no business with the Rwandan or <laughs> Moroccan government. With their government. They just saw it, and other people are like, oh, I like that. Yeah. And it would be nice for us to be a part of this. I know we're totally out of time. Yes. But <laughs> I know the fact that you've done so well for yourself played a role in pushing this. Yes. Uh, and you said it, even you had to push it for about six years or thereabouts before you got something out, you got something out of it. I think it's creative the way you are approaching mm. this to tell the story. And yes, you should totally watch it if you've not done that already. <laughs> if you're like Bukola. <laughs> but you <ha> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so you need to deal with this, Ebuka, before you go. There are men out there who have not forgiven you because they catch their women and checking your posts checking your and post. saying, darling, look at the Buka style. Why can't you ever dress like a Buka? What we was made for I you know. doesn't... But look, Ebuka, everything works. Belly. You know? Ebuka, you need to speak to That's those men and women. That's why I say it was us now. Exactly. <laughs> so you need to sp men. speak to them. And yes. I say, wow. look at you. Wow. And then tell us, try uh, this. Uh, so what so I ordered yeah, yeah, because yeah, of what I got. Ebuka almost ruined Banky Dublin's wedding. This Ebuka. He almost ruined the wedding. Banky was like, what is this Ebuka? So here's my... I feel like this is my service to humanity, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Because Wonderful when service. I wear these things, I clearly put the person that made the cloth here. Oh, you will not okay. decide to go and give it to your tailor. <laughs> and then you just and inadvertently cause issues. There are people, and these are all Nigerian designers, right? And I'm yeah. very, very particular about that. I'm very passionate about Nigerian businesses and Nigerian fashion. I almost always wear Nigerian. I tag the person there, I take it to the person yeah. to make the clothes. <laughs> what do you, what do, you, do you want to apologize to the men out there? Please, Eluka, you have to apologize. My, my statement to you is, Go to the gym, lose that pot belly. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the designers I tag, make the clothes for you, and you will look even better than me. All right, Ebu, come <laughs> for you. You know his address on social media. <laughs> I, you know, I was just remembering what Banky was like, oh, no, Ebu, no, no, no. <laughs> Ebu, thank you so much. Ebu, come with you, TV host, and of course, he's turning up Africa uh, the best way he can. We wish you the very best in this yeah, uh, very you. journey, and of course, uh, your big show on the Big Brother uh, Niger. Guys, of course.
Yeah, Ebu is going to close the show. For, no, yeah, he we, should, we, he should we, close, the close the show today. So let me say my own. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jeffrey Zama Bukala. You're next. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, we'll be on Ebu Turns Up Africa. Maybe you never can tell. I'm Bukola Koka. Well, I'm not the one who will close the show. <laughs> the one who will close the show is Ebuka, but I'm Kaido Kikiru. <laughs> My name is Ibuka of Uchendo. Yes, Ibuka Tons of Africa is streaming exclusively on Prime Video. And uh, thanks for joining us today on The Morning Brief. And Sunrise Daily is next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a true member of the family. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ibuka. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. <laughs>